In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use Grammarly's plagiarism tool. But since it's only available to premium subscribers, I'd like to see how well it stacks up against another free online plagiarism tool. All right, let's get started. Here we are in my Grammarly app and I have created four documents. The first is one I wrote myself. It is a terrible piece of writing, but is undoubtedly all my own work. So Grammarly's plagiarism checker shouldn't have any issues with it. The other three documents are all taken from the internet and I have tried to capture a variety of texts. The first is a famous introductory paragraph from Charles Dickens' novel A Tale of Two Cities, which I took from the Gutenberg Press website. The second is a movie review from the New York Times for Hubby Halloween. And the third is a paragraph taken from a high school biology textbook, which I found on Amazon called Concepts of Biology. I'll compare Gramley's results with the free online testing site called qtext.com and we'll see which does a better job at identifying plagiarism. So we'll start with my own woeful attempt at writing. I'll click on Gramley's plagiarism button and interestingly, Gramley has found a similar text online, but as you can see, it's identified the first seven or so words as the same as found on a website called justanswer.com. So it looks like in this instance, Grammarly is just being a little bit overzealous. Now let's check the same text using our free online tool. And Qtext returns a nil result, which is 100% correct. So in this instance, the online checker seems to be a little bit more accurate than Grammarly. Now we'll test the famous opening lines to Charles Dickens' novel, A Tale of Two Cities. I've copied this text from the Gutenberg.org website, and remarkably, Gramley wasn't able to find any matching text on the internet and believes the writing to be 100% original, which is completely incorrect. So let's compare that result to the online tool and Qtext has identified some of the text, but from a different website to the one I used. Perhaps it's basing its results on the first hit it comes across. We can see there is mention of Charles Dickens in the results. So while it's not a perfect result, it is certainly better than what Grammarly achieved. We'll now try the New York Times movie review. We'll open it up in Grammarly and click on the plagiarism button and the result is almost instantaneous, successfully identifying that the text is from the newspaper article. Interestingly, Qtext also recognizes the text, but again from a different website to the one I used, this time from archive.org, which seems to be an archived version of the original New York Times article. The final text in our test is perhaps the most appropriate for checking plagiarism, and it's a paragraph taken from a school biology textbook called Concepts of Biology by OpenStax. Here, Gramley does a good job of recognizing the text from a website, albeit not amazon.com, where I took the text from. And it's a similar result for Qtext, which also identifies the paragraph but similarly from a different website and not the same website that Grammarly identified. If I open one of the results, we can see it's an educational site who are making the book available under a Creative Commons license. So there we have it. That is how to use the plagiarism checker in Grammarly. However, as you can see, there's not much difference between Grammarly's premium feature and free checking tools that are available on the internet. And that's it. I hope you found the video useful. For more tips and videos like this one, be sure to subscribe to the channel and you can check out my blog, facultyofapps.com. Until next time, thank you very much for watching.